Greetings, everybody. Hope you're okay. Hope you're fine. It's another beautiful day here. It's April 28th. It is a lovely, lovely month. It's end of the month. So imagine we are already in the end of the month. So next week is going to be the fifth month of the year. So time is flying. No matter what, I'll be complaining or writing, but life still goes on. So imagine that life is still moving on forward. So we must keep on moving forward no matter what we are faced with. So we're here every last Wednesday of the month talking about our Emerald Book Club. We read about books, 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 and more books. Obviously, can't see because of my screen, but it's another beautiful day. So I hope you have been doing okay, and hope everything that you have been doing has been positive or has been directing you towards your goal or your ambition. As we say, we, before you do something, you say, is it relative? Is it necessary? Is it helping me reach my goals? Would I be embarrassed about it a long time ago? Or in the future, would it put me down? So those are the things you think about before you make decisions or you, you take action. So is it necessary? Is it important? Is it a priority? Something which I'll regret later on in the future? If I have a sort of thing, would I feel bad about it? Some of the things you need to ask for those who still have rational in the mind. Some people nowadays don't really care anymore. They're just autopilot, but those who are awake and use their conscious and their subconscious, you think about it. You don't just say anything that comes to mind. You think it through and say, yes, is that necessary? We pause, we just react to situations. And that's why we're here today. So today is uh, April 28th, as you say, it, and it's a lovely day. It's 12 o'clock, 1 p.m., which is our book club every last Wednesday. Those who want to join us. We are live on Facebook and we are also in using Zoom. But today I will back to my usual book, Be Your Own Life Coach. Why it's a great book. That's my story is which can tell. Why? Because it helps people improve themselves. This is a book for people about how to adopt themselves, isn't it? How to coach yourself. Why people need to the coaching? We need to understand ourselves, how to create our goals, how to achieve them, how to unleash our inner beast of Ask the power look within ourselves, how to create your success. Why? Because most people are struggling with these ideas. It's not really about the outside, but really the inside. Aligning themselves with their feelings and their thoughts, to be honest. What are the things which we need to learn? Once your feelings are in the right place and your thoughts are sweet, you know, and positive, and you know how to control your state of mind and Feel yourself with your, with your feelings, my goodness me, you'll be imaginable. So those who are famous, or most people who are doing well because they have understood how to do it. So people look up to them because why? They are bold, they're courageous, they produce, they create. That is what people love, that's what life is about. So people tell you, oh, I don't believe in this. It's a lie because they have heroes, heroines who are doing great things. And that's why, who, that is who they look up to. Why? Because they believe in themselves. People will tell you don't believe yourself, but they look up to those who believe in themselves. So don't go for that trick. I'm going to talk about now chapter six of um, I don't know, I know you can see because of the screen, but there you are. What do you want and what are you going to do about it? I'm going to talk about what do you want and what are you going to do about it? I'm going to So your destiny is shaped by your self-image because the way you see yourself determines your expectations. I put the way you see yourself determines your expectations. Not however silly you. We are programmed. Most people are taught however see you. How do the government see me? How do they like me? Do they accept me? Do they think I'm nice? No, it's the way you see yourself is what you expect in return. Yesterday I had a conversation with somebody and talking about, no, but Abba said, no, 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 it's the way you see yourself. I went on for a long time, like, no, you must see yourself, you must do it yourself, the way you see yourself. Don't wait, I'm coming, no, I'm not doing it for you. Like, you must do something. No, 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 no. If I, do, if I do it for you, you won't change. Until you see it yourself, that's when you you change. But don't, if anyone does it for you, you just do nothing for yourself. You won't really be converted or you won't, you won't really be convinced. So until you change the way you see yourself, yes, I'll say that again. Your destiny is shaped by your self-image. 
because the way you see yourself determines your expectations. The way you see yourself determines your expectations. In turn, your expectations determine your behavior. So if you don't expect, your behavior will just be the same. Your expectations determine your behavior. This will create a particular outcome. It is that simple. There's no lot of uh, deep, you know, facts, scientific things which you have to express. No, just the way you see yourself shows what you expect, and then that shows your behavior. That is it. Nothing big about it. Just one thing you do will show you your behavior. So how you see yourself will determine your behavior, which will determine a particular outcome of a sub of a situation. So if you're struggling with, oh, my house is this, it's, it's because you see yourself. The way what you have around you is what you see about yourself. If you're struggling, then you, you believe in struggle. And if you see if your house is not very nice, or if you have small things, you probably believe in small things. It's you expect small things. People are telling you something, that means you don't transmit yourself. So it's about how you see yourself. But in other words, the outcome you get will be the one you believe you deserve. And it will be in line with your self-image. In most cases, all the outcome which you get will be the one you believe you deserve. So all the things you are getting, all you're meeting, all you're reading, all you're coming to you because you believe you deserve it. You believe the world's against you, guess what? The world will be against you. you believe in, oh, people are hearing us, guess what? It's because you believe it and you believe you deserve it. Because of these people hate me, because people will reject me. And you believe it 100%. I mean, it happens like you see, I told you, well, let's say, no, no, it's because you believe you deserve it. So don't blame others because you attracted that so because you believe it in your mind. So your mind attracts what you believe, what you think about yourself. So what you expect from others is what you get. Not what you expect others to give you. So whatever you believe is what you will deserve. And it's in line with your self-image. So that is your self-image. People are ready to blame racism, oh, it's color, oh, it's Generalism, oh, it's the government, oh, it's my family, oh no, it's your self image. You believe you don't deserve it. So you get what you don't deserve. And in most cases, what you believe you don't deserve is always struggling, or you believe in fear, or believe in lack, or believe in not respecting ourselves. Those are things most people believe in. And once they get it, because it's hard and it's not, it's not uh, positive. So you end up struggling more and you end up getting distressed and depressed. Why? Because you believe in things which are, are going against the way your body works or your mind works. So it causes you to error, to make more mistakes, to fail a lot more. And that's why people complain because what they're believing is something which is low or which has no respect or value. It causes you to expect low things and bad things and cheap things which hurt you, which make you work harder, which make you fail, which can make you make mistakes. That's why people are complaining a lot because the things they attract are not good. Yes, the thing, everything you want in life you can find. You can find mangroves, you can find fields, you can find small things. All the things in life are there, but you can also find the good things if you focus on the images that is in your mind about what you think you deserve. An example, so if you see yourself as a winner, you will expect great things for yourself and you will then persevere towards your goals even when things get tough or challenging. Because of this, you will succeed more often than you fail. Your successes confirm to yourself and everyone else that you are indeed a winner. If you see yourself as a winner, then you will work hard and say, you know what, I'm a winner. I'm going to go forward. I'm going to do this. Sometimes you fail and take a whole year. It doesn't matter. As Usain Bolt said, he prepared for one event over four, five years, 10 years, just to run one just to run one 10 seconds of his life prepared for over five, 10 years. Now he's other athletes, they prepared 10 years for just to run one event which takes less than 10 seconds. Most people wouldn't do that. They say, no way, I cannot prepare 10 years just to do one thing. But look at what he got. He got a world championship, he got money, he got, he got um, endorsements, he got uh, deals, contracts from that 10 seconds which he prepared for. Taking over four or five years. People say that's that's mad, but look what he got now. He became a champ many times. He became he got endorsements, he got royalties in the back end. We don't see that, but once you're a champion, 
the money they paid him plus good endorsements, other brands want to be associated with him. So they pay him just to wear the clothes. Now he doesn't have to do nothing at all because his hard work is shown and people now want him, people are now paying him just to be wear their clothes, just to advertise their thing. Why do people see him as a champion? But also say, no, 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 I'm not a winner. They follow winners. Perfect example because why he's the athletics, the 100 meter run takes only 10 seconds. Most of them do it under 10 seconds and they prepare for a long time. Some people again, whilst they were young, preparing for that championship until some take 10 years. I don't know how, I'm sure he was again when he was 14, he said both. That's what he says. So he prepared for that event and only 10 seconds event. Well, I'm missing that because it's the shortest, one of the shortest events we have in this world and people prepare it for years. But look at the back end and how he received it and how he won, isn't it? He saw himself as a widow and he said, I'm not going to wait, I'm not going to give up until the end. Most people, I don't want to say negative stuff, but oh, why is that? Oh, for 10 years old. Well, no, 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 no. I win today, I win this one, that's it. That's it. So that is an example. The others which take a long time, like probably married in 10 years or business for 10 years, but why I use the 100 meters event because it only takes 10 seconds. So you prepared four years to run 10 seconds. Many people won't do that. Maybe it's because it's not their, it's not their goal. Maybe that's fine. It's not, I don't think it's wrong for say you can pay no, 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 no. I don't think it's bad if we don't do that. Not everyone can be a runner. So I don't think people can do that. But it, the level of discipline it takes to do that. That's what I'm talking about. So if people can do that in their own ideas, then yes. It's not about the event, but the level of discipline, the mindset that it takes to do that. We're all different. So I say people, oh, you're not a runner. Yes, not everybody is a runner. So I can't judge everyone, compare everyone with the same, like, oh, you must run. No, you must not. But if you can use the same mindset of being disciplined and using a mindset to be a winner. So the image that you use, you see, is what you get. This is the book. I don't know if you can see it. And there is. So in contrast, if you see yourself as a loser, you expect little for yourself and give up easily when challenges come along. And that's when most people are you're not the runner. But if you're, if you whatever you are, if you are a teacher, if you are a writer, if you are an artist, if you're a musician, if you are a nurse, if you're a doctor, if you are a coder, if you are an engineer. If you are a streamer, if you are a YouTuber, you know, if you are a fashionist, like, like this, you know, if you see yourself as a loser, you will expect better for yourself, no matter which niche or uh, which uh, job you're in or which industry you're in. You will give up easily when you, when challenges come along. So even those who are, if you're in a partnership with somebody or you're looking for someone to work with, you must look for those who are the middle, those who, well, I will take it back. You can, if you want your business to grow or your, or your project to succeed, if you hire work with those who sort of see themselves as losers, when something comes wrong, which it always does, they will uh, give up because if life is about going up and down, there's seasons of there, there's spring, there's autumn, there's summer, there's winter. The times when things are hard, times when things are soft, times when things are quick, times when things are slow, that is life. So people, complain about all oh, things are going well, everything has to be perfect. When things go wrong, they're the ones to quit because they don't think they deserve it. But yet they want to work for you. For those people, you have to think twice because when times get hard, they will desert you. So think twice before you get into a relationship or into a friendship or into a business or into a contact with people who have a poor self-image of themselves. Because in the beginning, they'll be happy when things are right. But when things go bad, you get the person disappear. If you want to do them, so make sure you prepare, make sure you have a contingency plan for them, or make sure you know that what they're going to do. As I said, the way that people see themselves, their expectations will determine their behavior, which will create a particular outcome. They can tell you a lot of stuff, but if you know their behavior and how they see themselves, you'll know what, will have, what they will do when times are hard. People can lie to you, but behavior doesn't lie. So make sure you know that. So, if you're going to hire them or be in a relationship with someone, make sure you know that the bad times will run away. Make sure you know that and have a plan for that. Don't say, oh, I didn't know. It caught me by surprise. If someone happens to you twice, that is a decision. When you make a mistake twice, that is a decision. Let somebody hurt you twice, someone looking to punch you twice, that is a decision you've made. You've not become zero fault. So 
If you're working with losers, make sure you know what losers do when times are hard. Yes? So because of it, if you see yourself as a loser, you will fail more often than you succeed. And this will confirm the way you saw yourself a lot as a failure. If you believe you're a failure, you see, you see, you're being racist, you see, I lost a job. It makes people happy. It's amazing. Somebody, no, no, no. She felt like, ah, you see, no, life is bad. Because they see themselves as a loser. It's not because life is bad, but people see themselves as a loser, as, as someone who doesn't deserve it. So they get all the bad things, and when they get them, they're happy. Someone told me, I'm, I'm, my house, I'm happy in my house. I thought, like, oh, you know, the house is wet, it's small, you have, you cannot, you, there's not enough space for you, but someone was happy. People are happy with things which are bad because they see that this is what they expect. They are told that you have bad things, if you have uh, old TV show market, you have torn shoes, that means you're good. Now when they got torn shoes, they're happy. Yet they go home, they struggle, they complain because when they walk, the shoes pack them. When they have no money, they can't buy food for their children, they can't buy clothes. So they're struggling, but they have because it's what they expect, yet it's not how their life works. If it's another planet whereby, if you didn't need oxygen, then by all means, then yeah, but if you need oxygen, you need to move on, if you have to grow up as we all do, then if you don't grow up, then guess what happens? You get left behind. If you don't, the point is, yes, see it from your point of view, but if you see how life works, people grow. So if you're saying that I'm not going to grow because it makes me happy, then you're going against growing. So they're saying I'll be 10 years old forever. Something's wrong, isn't it, right? Or is it, is it okay to be 10 years old forever? So if you're not 10 years old until you're 30, then that's fine. But when I was cold, don't complain I was leaving behind. So it was the laws which we cannot change. Don't help me against it. If it was of, of course, laws of nature, obviously, that's the laws which we don't see, those who live in them. But if you're complaining about it, you see it off as a loser, then don't complain when I was win. That's the point. People will say it's good to lose. Fine enough, then lose. But when I was win, they get jealous. Why? People tell you it's bad to be poor. It's good to be poor. Is money is bad? Fine, okay. But then they'll ask you for money. They ask you for help. Like why? They said it's bad. That's the point where by their argument falls down. People lose us for argument. They tell you how being rich is bad. It's not good to have much property. But you're like, okay, fine, don't. So I get my property. Now they want you to share. Like why? But it's bad. So why ask me for money? Say no, I don't give them. I say no, no, no. If you say money is bad, if you say riches are bad, if you say success is bad, then don't. Ask for mine. Don't ask me to help you. Don't, don't ask me to invite you when I'm celebrating. Because once you're celebrating, they're like, yeah, I'm coming. Like, no, you're not. Because it's not what, it's not your self-image. It's not what you deserve. If you come there, you bring me down. No complain. Oh, it's too expensive. I went one, took somebody out to buy. Oh, spend too much money. What's wrong with you? I need money to buy all these things. Wow, I was like, oh. Those mindset. Oh, celebrating. Oh, no, no. Two, two pounds on a on drink. No, oh, I could buy it. I could eat. I could buy milk. I could buy bread. I could buy that. And you are complaining. What's wrong with you? That's too much money spent. I can't do that. No. So, so you know, people are different. They think different. They know, no, no. I'm not, never. I am never taking a loser out to celebrate. No. Never, never, never. Because they complain. It's too expensive. You're wasting money. What? Like a car? It's expensive. You know, you can't travel. Then you can just. Or once you travel, they they, they call taxes. <laughs> never, never taking out your loser. I, I, I'm not. Never, because why? They complain about your success. They'll, they'll say, you might, they'll, they'll call you crazy. So learn to be careful of who you tell your dreams and who you celebrate. Be very careful, I'm telling you. If you're a winner, celebrate with winners. If you're a loser, stick, be careful, avoid losers. People who have small things because they will tell you you are wrong. So explain to you how bad you are, how crazy you're going to. Some say you're going to S code H E L because you're doing well. And they're trying to bring you down to their level of thinking. So never ever, don't even have no sympathy for them. Who you empathize with, you develop them. Whatever you empathize with, you take on their mindset. If you're sorry for a loser, you become a loser because you take on their feeling. It happens to you as well. So don't be black into into feeling sorry for a loser, for a failure, because they want you to come and beg them and stop working hard, come and look after me because that's not good. But on vacation, put your foot down and say no to losers. Yes. So now that you have chosen to see yourself as a winner, so we here, we go for winners, right? For winners, we get more done, we create more solutions, we become more positive, we have more fun, we get more peace, we enjoy ourselves. And then on the end, 
once a winner, you avoid losing, you avoid failures, you avoid stress, you avoid regrets, we avoid uh, wasting time, we avoid procrastination. Why? Because we're getting things done. An example is football, when people score a goal, my people are happy, yes. Any sports, somebody scores a goal, everyone's happy, why? Because you have made a point, it's been taken about. So whenever something is won, everyone celebrates, when they lose, they celebrate. That's the funny thing, a loser who follows sports will celebrate when their team, you said losing is good, so why is celebrating when? Or when the team loses, they complain. A loser who thinks losing is good will complain when others lose. They'll call others lose. When others lose, they'll call them, why are you losing? But yet they blame themselves. You have to be careful of what you think. You have to, it's, it's somewhat something, it's another world out there. A loser will tell you, don't win. But when others lose, they complain, oh, my team lost, and they feel bad. Why? You did not losing. When others win, they cast them, they cast them out. Who do you think you are? But you don't believe in winning. So why are you feeling bad when others win? You don't believe in winning, isn't it? But once you see yourself as a winner, and you create a gloriously self-confident self-image of yourself, now you need to take action. The next step is take action and define your ideal life, and then take action to begin to live it. So first, we create a big self-image of yourself. I am a winner. I am a champion. I am great. I am powerful. So just wait up again. I don't feel like good. I am honest. I am great. I do well. I succeed in everything I do. I see myself as a winner. I do not quit. I always persist. I always get my things done. Now I'm going to live it and take the action. When I live as a winner, that's the next part. Some people do the first part. They Make the image, but the next part is the action. You gotta do the action. Because the action is what gets you the results. Unless your mind is not developed whereby you can just think it and practice it, then it happens. If you're there yet, that's good. You cannot take the action. So you gotta believe like a winner. You have to live like a winner. If you're a winner, take the best things. Don't hang out with people who are complaining, who are losing, who are always doing the bad things. Find those who are winning. Learn from winners, learn from those who are successful. Go to go, go where winners. Um, uh, stay. Well, we winners uh, meet, we winners talk. So, you want to pick up the winner's language. Avoid negative words, negative thoughts, negative feelings. But why? They will bring upon all those people who are misers, who are complainers, and it will destroy your peace, your aura around you. The energy people bring around them, those if you are in a midst of those who are complaining. Remember, there's a the energy is, is they put they. They have an energy field around them. If it's negative, it affects your field. But if you're positive, it blocks them up. If you, if you not have a positive field, it does not get engulfed. That's the thing about negativity. It's like grass, it grows, it doesn't need an invitation. Poverty is bold, it doesn't need an invitation. It just comes. Still, it's an invitation, it comes. But to win, you must work, put in the work. Because now we are geared to, most of the world is geared to losing. So all the thoughts, majority of the thoughts in the world are. I took it out after losing, uh, death, is, uh, failure, hell, was what most of the world is thinking about. So wherever you go, it's everywhere. So you have to work hard to be positive now because more than half of the world is negative. So you have to do the effort to overcome negativity. And because wherever you go, it's around you. In the beginning, everything was positive. So failing was hard because everyone was positive. But now, because most people are negative, you have to put in the extra work just to be positive. That's why you have know, to avoid negative places because they're everywhere now. So you got to do the work now if you want the positive. It's going to hurt you, it's going to make you, but then do it. But in the end, you succeed. A story, as Thomas, as Thomas Jefferson, third president of the USA once said, nothing can stop a man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal. Nothing on earth can help a man with the wrong mental attitude. So it's all about your attitude. Once you get the right attitude, nothing can stop you. Trust me, not, not your friend, not that person you think is making fun of the government, not that password, not Australia, not whatever. Once you have the right mental attitude, that begins with what? With your self image, with your actions, with your motivate, with your goals, with your uh, goals which make you come to the comfort zone and make you, make you work, make you. Putting energy in and making it motivated with all your willpower. All which makes you think hard, think far, and think big, 
cause which makes you motivated. Once you develop your persistence, your gratitude, that makes your positivity. If you develop positive gratitude, add on willpower, those are the things you need to do. And then add in a feeling of joy, success, love, and passion in there. If you mix all those together, nothing can stop your eye because that's how life rewards those who are met you. It doesn't matter, you move everything away from you. Those who are trying to come to you, they won't even touch you. That's the benefit, that's the beauty about it. Nothing will stop you. But if you have the wrong attitude, if you have the wrong seed to plant, you won't, you, you're going nowhere. You can work hundreds of years, people, people are busy going nowhere because why they have the wrong mental attitude. You can plant, you can prepare, you can work many hours, but it is going nowhere because why your mental attitude is not correct. Why, does it, why do we say it is not correct? Because the laws of life say you reap what you sow. If you want to plant, life is like a garden. So whatever you're planting, you get out. If you want to get apple seeds, you want to, you want to get an apple, plant an apple seed. If you want to buy apples, you go where apples are. That's the basics about life. You go where you want. So if you want to buy a fruit or an orange, you go where oranges are sold, where you plant an orange seed. So many people are planting an apple seed. You get an orange seed, and then when it comes out, they complain that life is bad. God, it doesn't exist. It's horrible. That life is racist. Everything's rejected. Because why? They're using a wrong mental attitude. It's like a car. Those who drive, you have a diesel car or petrol car. Now you have uh, electric cars. But if you put this on a petrol car, people like you're mad. Exactly, it is mad. So why do you have the same with your mind? You put a wrong mental attitude in your mind. It's madness. But when others do it, it's fine because self image. But the better you feel about yourself, the more adventurous your vision will be. The better you feel about yourself, the more adventurous your life will be. A big plan requires you to be a big person with unlimited internal resources, loads of confidence and self-belief and the willingness to pick yourself up as many times as it takes to accomplish what you want. I will repeat that. A big plan requires you to be a big person with unlimited internal resources, loads of confidence and self-belief and the willingness to pick yourself up as many times as it takes to accomplish what you want. Life is so much fun or more fun when we know that the only limitations are those of our own making, not the sky. In that case, if you choose to set aside those limitations, you can achieve absolutely anything you want to do. Yes. Once you put away your limitations of fear, or racism, or generalism, or failure, or, or, or no knowledge of no, you know, or no ability, get away with those limitations. You will be unstoppable. So number one, you want to create your ideal life. So you want to create a vision of your ideal life. Make a picture, because your mind works on the images and the words you use. So you want to create a David picture of the, of the life you want in your mind. Visualize. Don't build any negativity. Don't think of people you want to meet. Think of positive. Think of you winning. Think of your success. Ideal life. Remember, it should not be based on hurting others or pressing others or taking away from others because that will cause you to fail as well. So you want to also a life whereby you give, you're honest to give, and you where it's a win win situation. Because your dear life will depend on working with others. So make sure you work with others. You also have right people in your vision and also everybody benefiting from the transaction. So I want to create a precise picture. The key is precise. I just want to be rich. I want to be healthy. That's not precise. I want to lose weight. I want to have 10 pounds on the gain muscle. I want to have an income of this, 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 selling, selling this product for how long? Something like that. So not a precise picture or vision of what your ideal life want to be. If it's your business, if your relationship, so you have to be exact. You want to know exactly who you want to be in your life. Don't just say anybody can I want a friend. No, I want a partner. No, it has to be someone who has A, B, C, D, who does this, does that for me. So don't waste your life living what you don't want to be because you're just making ends meet. You want to please others, always just a stepping stone. No, find what you want and go for it. If it's challenging, you just walk until it happens. Remember the story of Usain Bolt, who spent four years to run 10 seconds. 
Once it's over, he won. He got all the money. Now he's retired. He's got all the money. He doesn't need to work again. I don't think he needs to work unless if he uses money wisely. I don't think he needs to work again because he got endorsements. He got royalties. People are paying him for other things. So his work paid off. Those 10 seconds paid off for him. If he can do it to cope, if he can't, then no problem. So once you're living your ideal life, you are making your own personal contribution to the world, peace and happiness. So by making your ideal life, making your life happy, you're making the world happy. You're told to make others happy first. No, 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 make, by making yourself happy, you're creating a happiness around you, which adds to the world's happiness. The world runs on happiness and peace and joy and love. Because once you create yours, it adds on to you. I mean, it spreads to others. By helping others, you make yours empty, you, you lose out. So we're told, think of ours first, no, think of yourself first, love yourself first, think of others, make yourself happy. If everyone in the world make more themselves happy, guess what, there'll be no sadness. But to be running around, making fun, make you happy, make me happy. No, if we all could make ourselves happy, that's it, end of story, problem solved. And no, we're told, oh, run there, run, help others, no. So you want to keep on making your ideal life. Love is to know your soul. So when you are living your ideal life, you will be happier, you will be healthier, be more serene, you know. You have more energy, be more cheerful, and look and feel years younger. A key oh, antidote to looking younger is to be happy. Sometimes all the stresses, all the things you put, it makes you look older. When you look and you see people think you're like, no, like, oh, no, sorry. But because the things you do, you're not happy, you're not healthy, you're losing, it creates all this necessary baggage which you're carrying. So one key is to create a vision of what you generally will make you happy. You have to be generous as well. Don't just take it. Be generally of what will make you happy exactly. You have to be utterly honest and truthful with yourself. But people are always cheating or lying, they are never happy. Cheaters never prosper. The more you cheat, the more you, people can believe you, but inside you, you feel your own unhappiness. You can lie to others, but believe it, but you end up causing your unhappiness and you end up losing. People who you see, who oh, will try to lie to you hundred times, they'll, they'll cover up the whole story. Very nice, they make a nice story to lie to you, but, and they're happy. When you look at the situation, they are always, they never come, they're crying in the back. They cry here, they put on a big face, I'm strong, I'm powerful, but they make you a lie. But in the back end, they are crying, they're crying, because we know it. Life is very simple, it's nothing is about, unless the code is there, but some things, just for your behavior. Spend some behavior, you'll know who they are. Those who talk a lot, those who brag a lot, the bullies, the people who are always looking for power over others, in the back, they're empty. People who are always yapping around, making noise, always, always crying, bullying others, people who are always wanting to run around, having many partners, having friends, have a lot of things. They're looking for attention, and they, in the back, they're happy. Once they go back in the house, when nobody's watching, they cry, because why are they lying? And honest, so they're pretending to be what they are not. So you must learn into learn to be honest with yourself and be truthful with yourself. And can I do this? No, I can't do this. No. Do I love her? No. I don't I love you? No. Just say no. Some people say I love you, but no minute, and then they end up getting into a rush, which they cannot do. Then something goes wrong. Oh, it's your fault. No, you're not honest. When somebody finds out they dump you, when you blame them, oh no, no, no. So be careful, be careful of those who are not honest. But they'll blame you for the dishonesty. They'll say you're the problem. And then they'll be hungry. I don't want even to deal with them anymore because they make you seem like you're the bad one. Okay, so your dad is honest, then they say you're the thief, you're the liar. You know, that is like. So learn to create a vision of yourself and you want to be honest with yourself. This is the book here. So the story here talked about banks and how they created a, a recent report commissioned by Lloyd's TSB, the UK bank found that two thirds of Britons would happily turn down extra salary gain from promotion if they could enrich their personal lives. So we yes, money is good, but thought about having a lot of money. Money is good, but don't base your happiness on anything which is materialistic. Material is, is just uh, it's a tool for you to use. So the money is good, the house is good, but it's a tool for you to use. Don't base your existence on the materials. We're ready to get money so you can have fun. It's the 
Considering what you want to get, money is at means to an end. So she, if you focus on the means, no, some people told okay, the big life is get a big jet. It's good, you can, you can have a big jet, go for it. If you're doing the show, then no, if you need a big house, yes, go for it. If you can handle it, if life rewards you with a big house, then go for it. But if you're chasing a big house, don't do it. If life rewards you with a big house or a big jet, then you deserve it. If you've earned it, deserve it. I mean, go for it. But So, if you manage a fabulous life where people talk wealth, live in a huge house, you have a smarter car than anyone else, I would say if you earned it, yes, but if you're, just, if you're doing it to show off, don't do it. If you're doing it just to, to, to fill the emptiness, don't. If you've earned, if you've worked hard for the house and you can afford it and it can not, not affect your bills, your status, your income, and you're doing it not to show off, then go for it. But many people are just doing it, people who are doing like videos, they should show big cars, but they don't own them, they rent them just to show off. No, don't have maturity to show off. Don't use it for your own benefit of others, but don't use it to show off. If you have a big house, yes. If you can own it, if it's been divided, yes. If you can afford it, yes. You know, if you look at the future, how it affects your finances, how, what, why are you having a house? Then go for it, but to be honest, most people cannot afford a big house or a big car. But if you can, I mean, you have worked hard for it, and you, if you're a millionaire, and you want you know you can afford it, and you have the money, work for it, go for it. But if you just, Putting up a face, then be honest. Well, I had a car once, to be honest. I wouldn't lie, I love the car, but yeah, I think it was a bit out. I wasn't ready for that yet. Oh, nine years, I have to, I see you, but no, I said, no, maybe it wasn't trying to have that kind of car. That's your choice, anyway. So, wealth is good, but you're using it for the right purpose, not to, not to brag, not to show, not to look at, look at me. Sometimes, we get us, once you lose your self insight, then you, the feeling of ownership of others comes into you. So if you have wealth, you have a big house, land with positive and always be grateful because the moment you lose your gratitude, you start showing off, you start looking at others, showing off, and then people will start, people will see that, oh, I'm always empty over there, isn't it? Yeah. So now, as you learn to suffer, it's time what? It is time to grow up. It is time to grow up now. We must grow up. You want to take responsibility for actively creating the specific results you want. Not someone doing it for me, someone pay for me, do it yourself. I mean, people don't want to do it, especially now. I mean, people don't want to do it for themselves. But they want the TV or the big house, but when you pay for it. No, 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 no. So for those, we encourage you to grow up so you can be able to do it and create the results you want. Because if you don't, someone else will create the results you want. And someone else gives you what you want, you'll be under the timetable. Because if you're happy with somebody else's program, that's fine. But if you then don't complain. People don't want to work. One time I was going to buy the house, they buy them a house, but because it's not what they want, they'll complain because it's not exactly what they want. They will complain about you. Because oh, you're being hostile, you're not giving them my house, I want to spend enough money, but they are not working, they're not taking responsibility for themselves. Then they go and start complaining and say, Oh, this is bad, this is good. So be careful, be careful of those who don't do not take this point because they will ask you for help. When you help them, they'll say it's bad. Why? Because it is not what they want. So be careful. Just make a note of that. People who are not responsible, make sure you know exactly that because in the end, they will not be happy with what you give them, no matter what. That's not what they want. Never forget that. If you're getting married, if you're getting a partner, if you're getting an employee, know exactly who they are, and you know that make plan that if anything goes wrong, protect yourself, your business, your assets. Because nothing goes wrong, they will blame you and they want, they want the things you want for free. So make sure you, you always uh, have something planned, in, a continuous plan when they're dealing with people who have low self images. So they want what's yours for free and they'll blame you for everything that goes wrong. You need to give them because they don't want to take responsibility. That's a warning to you. It's a warning to me as well. But when you grow up, in the fullest sense, you give up all blame towards anyone else for any dissatisfaction you may feel about your life. For example, I mean, I don't blame the government, I don't blame my friend, I don't blame racism, I don't blame generalism, I don't blame my neighbor, I don't blame the, the guy who hit my car, I don't blame the person who was negative, I don't blame the person who dumped me, I don't blame anybody for anything that I feel about my life, because it is your life. You don't blame anything else, you don't blame the weather, you don't blame that person in China, you don't blame the Chinese, you don't blame the Mars, the Martian, you don't blame the sun, you don't blame the 
rave. You don't blame the people under the under the earth. Don't blame the flag affords. I don't blame the, the religious people. I don't blame the people. Goodness me, the blame game has to stop when you grow up. It has to stop 100%. Why? Because you take action for your own. You take responsibility for your own actions. So you become your own person and don't need the approval of your parents or anyone else for the way you should live. You don't need approval. I set you free. Stop looking for approval from people. Oh, do you love me? How's my house? How's, how's my skin color? Check my gender. Is my job good? Is my work good? Can I please go out? Can I talk to this person? Stop looking for approval. Once you grow up, you don't need approval. Do your hair. Look smart. Dress well. Obviously, don't be rude. Don't be a bully. Don't take advantage of others. Be rational. Be happy. Do what you want and go for it. Obviously, don't step, do not step on the rights of others. Don't be a show or a bully, but be yourself and go for people like, oh, why are you mad? Don't just walk through. You know, you gotta be a lion. You gotta just get for what you want. The highness will laugh. Oh, I think you got what you want. Guess what? Because you don't care. You get what you want. They don't. Because they are laughing behind for the country of what you want. They will not, they'll not watch you, but in the end, you get what you want. You get your peace, you get your job, you get the girl, you get the husband you want. You get a dream you want, you get it because what? You're going for it. You're not looking for the approval. They will hate you for it. But in the back, they'll admire you. They're like, oh, like, it's cool. Who should do that? You know, tell them, blah, 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 blah. but in the back, oh, how does it do it? Because why? You keep on winning. They keep on making excuses. They'll go call your name. They'll go talk about you. Guess what? They're spreading your influence. So love your enemies, isn't it? So once you grow up, you don't need people's approval for that. You never need people's approval. And the thing is, you don't make any excuse. Say no more excuses. No matter what you can go to, no more excuses. Feel the thing, feel the pain, feel the rejection. But if you approve yourself, you won't feel rejection. You won't feel sad. You won't feel rejected. You won't feel lonely. You won't feel like a failure because you're a winner. As physics says, no two objects can apply in the same space. No two objects can can occupy the same space or some place of something in your mind, in your conscious. I know it's at the front, but it's going to take one for the time. So if you're always a winner, guess what? You'll never be a loser. If you always think of the winner, prepare yourself to be as a winner, as a 100% faith. You have no time for worry, no doubt, so you won't be rejected, you won't feel disapproved, you won't feel, uh, uh, you won't feel lonely, you won't feel like a fella, because you have no time for that. There is just no time. For that because once you're in a positive state of mind, you are always going ahead. You work for people like this, like, huh? You work for stuff. The scorpions will bite you, even for the pain. Why? You have no time to focus on the small things. You are in a positive state of mind. So you want to make no more excuses when you get what you done. You know what I'm talking to? I don't know. Me, isn't it? <laughs> so no more excuses. And you have to believe it is possible. As Jesus said, the promises are to those who believe and to those who believe only. And I used to believe I said, no, I don't. Now I agree, because if you don't believe, you won't do it. If you don't believe that there is money out there, you'll go for it. If you don't believe you deserve a house, you won't come. You won't look for the house. If you don't believe you deserve a nice house, or a nice car, or a nice government, you won't go for the government. If you don't believe you deserve a nice partner, you won't look for a nice partner. Everybody nice will come to you, nah, nice and good. It's true. People don't believe they are. You think they were struggling, but they're not struggling because they don't believe they deserve it. So if you go help them, they'll say no. Because they don't believe they deserve it. I had I had someone the day like I thought I'll put sometimes you feel like I want to help them. You think they were struggling, but no, they don't want what is good. So be careful when helping people. Let people choose what they want. Don't go think for hours, okay, let me help them. I think they're struggling, let me help them. No, they don't want it. They don't believe they deserve it. So don't kill yourself or yourself over helping others because they have to they know what they want or they don't believe they want it i'm sorry okay, i'll teach you i'll buy this because then they fight in your face because why they don't want it they don't feel they deserve it so your feelings are for you and for yourself don't think others should follow what you think that's what thing you need to learn once you win like hey come this win come to this no not everybody wants to win not everybody wants to be a winner not everybody wants to be successful not everybody wants to be loving not everybody wants to be kind so once you succeed let those who are, follow those who are in the same path. For others will, they will cast you. They will cast you. I was cast out once. I learned. I said, hands up. 
on a win. I have seven, a seven of winners, those who are in the same mindset. Wow. You got me out good. But I'm happy I learned my lesson. Yes. So I believe it's possible. If you want to work, find those who believe it is possible. Don't tell your plans to those who don't believe. Never, never tell your plans to those who believe. If you're in a project, in a business, or if you're in a relationship, don't get involved with those who don't believe. No matter how beautiful you think they are, or how smart, or how you know, gorgeous, how what they've done. No, no, no. If they don't believe in the mission, the vision, don't even think of hiring them. Don't even bother, because in the end, it will cost you more than doing it and getting the right, the, the right person. Never do that. So believe it's possible, and then you can go. So clear out old. Yes? So those are ways in which you can increase your self-image. You're going to get out of there. So what do you want, and what are you going to do about it? That is the hope. So think about it. Create your self-image. You want to believe that you are a winner, that you are a champion. Why? Winner, because winners take it all. Winner always wins. Believe you're a winner, believe you're a winner and take the action. That means you can be positive, you can be persistent, you can work harder, you can work smarter, you can avoid losers, avoid excuses, you can avoid making many mistakes, you can avoid crying when you fall down, you can avoid a lot of things, a lot of stress, depressed friends, you are a winner. But believe it and then take the action. Let us do one happy thing. Believe it and take the action. Because that is how you will succeed. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that is our book club for today. Now, about this pairing chapter from Fiona Harold, the Queen B of British Life Coaching by Bell Express. Be your own life coach. How to take control of your life and achieve your wildest dreams. I don't know about you, but your self image matters. Stop looking at others and looking at, look at yourself. Look at yourself first, but then develop yourself, then help others for those who are into the same. As I say, not everybody wants it, so you cannot speak to others. That's what uh, you tend to think. So if you are if you are a believer, then look at your self-image. If you have to change, look at yourself. The things you wear, the things you have, the, the goods you have, the people you have will show your character and what you feel about yourself. And you as well, if you want to something in your life, look at their friends, look at their character, look at what they do, then you'll know exactly who they are. And you'll know if they are perfect fit or not. Life is that simple. Don't be fooled by the big people, the things, the words they use, the things they say, the way they walk. Look at what they do, their character. Look at their self image, it will tell you a lot about people. Somebody's self image will tell you a lot. You miss that. If you're going blindly, then it's your fault. But the image is always there. They cannot show it, but the behavior sometimes is, how can I say, is, is there. It shows about people knowing what you, how you behave. Is what people see. People tell you just the way you walk, people know a lot about you, the way you dress, the way you shake your hand. Those things are they're unconscious, but that's what people pick up. If you can pick those up, then you'll know exactly who people are. You will you'll never be fooled. But if you make the decision to go for them, then it's your fault. And all in all, have a great self-image, you know. It is always good to have a great self-image of yourself. So we're here to inspire and develop readers, writers, and open society and more. So this is our book club. We're here every last month, every last Wednesday in the month we go live. As we carry on now, we're going to bring more activities now. So we're going to do more creativity, a more, little more mathematics, more vocabulary, especially more arts now. So we also get a few computers courses for those who want to learn computer, because why most of the things now are going digital. So we'll be requiring, we'll be asking those who want so we obviously be in Zoom because we're going to meet. So those who are in the world can do a live meeting. For those who are going to meet. But here in England now, we can meet up to two households. Six people can meet now. Not indoors, I think, but outdoors. Come up for more around. So that is what we're going to. So we keep on moving forward. People are protesting around. People are a lot of volcanoes, a lot of uh, floods, a lot of protesters, a lot of killings. But what? We move on forward because why? We keep on following the vision. We don't focus on what people are, are happening. We acknowledge what's happening, but we keep on moving forward. Yes, things are bad out there can be good, but we keep on thinking positive and doing positive action. We don't change our vision based on what is happening to others. We don't change our mindset based on what people are going through. Yes, do we sympathize? Sometimes we sympathize because we don't help others to 
we wish others to think positive and win, but others have to make their own choices. People have their own free will to choose what they want to believe. Now these people are people nowadays will persecute you for not believing what they believe because you're being different from them. Because want you to fail like them. It's most people who fail want you to fail like them. So that's what they're going through. So you gotta be strong, especially now, and keep on being positive no matter what you have. Okay, so if you want to be peaceful, avoid those who are always creating uh, havoc, creating chaos. No matter who it is, it can be your best friend, it can be your dad, it can be your mom, it can be your sister, it can be your family, it can be your neighbor. Let me tell you, if someone's creating uh, chaos, it will affect you if you are connected to them. If your minds are connected to people and they cause chaos, it will affect you no matter what. So you have to, some things you gotta break, you have to burn some bridges. You gotta burn some bridges if you are interested in making it, if you're improving your self image. Not everyone you think is in your life is supposed to be in your life, you know? You say, nah, I grew up with them, oh my family. No, you gotta move on forward and start creating a beautiful life for yourself. If the others will come, come. If they fall back, they will fall back. But don't be black like an old friend. Oh, come to this, come to No, no, no. You moved on. We have grown up. We've changed. So we are moving forward. We want you to go back. Remember the days? Like, no, I don't. Oh, you're horrible. No, I'm not. I'm, I've grown. I'm, I'm no longer 15. I'm no longer 20. I'm, I'm 40 now, 30. Why do you need to act like 20 years ago? Oh, but no. So we've changed. But as you go for experiences, experiences will change you. People will not like it because now, you're not where they want to be. It's not about them, it's about you. So I always be positive with the goals and let's go for it. So learn to improve your self-image. So we're here writing books. We want to publish a few articles soon. So check out our page. And also you can subscribe to our newsletter, Emerald Book Club. So you can get notified, we can send you articles and what's the latest. But if you want to really inviting others to uh, present the books, the books as well. That will be soon. So we've got a lot planned. When people are going down, we are going up. So we have things are happening out there. We are planning more good things because we don't base our vision on what's happening around. So we are planning better things and better ideas. When life rewards you, you said thank you. We keep going and move on forward. So the next meeting will be in May, the last Wednesday of May. For those who would like to join us. It's going to be May 26th is the next meeting here, unless we get up an article, but our live book club meeting will be on the last Wednesday. So that's when we'll be seeing you next year. Apart from that, I'm going to play a little video before we go. So it is important for you to be always happy and enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's a lovely end to a lovely, lovely book club. Take care of yourselves, look up to yourselves, remember think positive. Write your story, remember you are the expert on your story. Remember that you are the expert on your story, so your story will sell more than many others. So get out, be creative, 
think, read, and write, and develop yourself. Your story is about you, and nobody can copy that. Write about yourself, nobody can copy your story. So think about you, your person, your identity is what will sell you, no matter where you go, because nobody has been to what you have been to. So I encourage you to do that here at Book Club. Write a story, write a story, and keep on writing, reading, and more to improve yourself. Have a great day, have a great month, and we'll see you in the next month. Take care and goodbye.